Well, now we're going to do this problem, and this has three expansions. Again, it starts out in the same place. A liter of gas at two atmospheres and 25 degrees C. It drops to 1.5 atmospheres and undergoes isobaric expansion. And now it doesn't drop to 1. It drops to 1.25 atmospheres and does an isobaric expansion back to the isotherm. And then it finally drops to 1 atmosphere. And the question is, what's the total work done by the gas during the three expansions? All right, so drawing a picture, let's draw our new situation. Here's our starting point. Same as the original starting point. We got one liter here. We got two atmospheres. Changes. Expands a little bit. <clears throat> now we're under 1.5 atmospheres of pressure. And we calculated that this volume is going to be 1.33 liters. We learned that in the last problem. Then there's another expansion. And we're going to expand to another volume. We're going to call this one V3. And that happens when we have 1.25 atmospheres of pressure. And then there's a fourth step that expands again under our final volume or final pressure of one atmosphere. And then we learn from doing the first two problems that this is going to end up being two liters of volume. So to find all the work for these steps, step A, then step B, and then step C, we're going to have to find out, first of all, what are the delta V's for all of them. And that's going to involve finding V3. Again, let's make this graphic. Let's put this on a PV diagram. Here's volume, here's pressure, and here's our isotherm, our 25 degree isotherm that this whole problem is happening at. Our starting point, again, is two atmospheres and one liter. Then there's a drop to 1.5. And then an expansion isobarically back to the isotherm. And we know that that volume is 1.33. Then there's a drop. And this time we're dropping to 1.25 atmospheres. And then there's an isobaric expansion to this volume here, V3, which we don't know yet. And then there's a final drop to one atmosphere and then an expansion back to the isotherm and this volume is going to be equal to two liters. So we're going to find the work here in all these three steps and then add it up. Well the work for step A is just going to be minus pressure for step A times the change in volume for step A. The pressure during expansion A is 1.5 atmospheres. The volume change is 1.33 from 1 or 0.33 liters. Well, we've done this before. Well, we've done this before. The work of when we converted it, 50.6 joules. So that's work A. Work part B. Well, we can't do this unless we know volume change. Work for part B is going to be the pressure for part B, that's 1.25 atmospheres, times the change in volume during expansion B. We have to find V3 before we know this. So thinking about Boyle's law, P3V3 is equal to P2V2. So that means our V3 is going to be P2V2 divided by P3. Our pressure in the second expansion was 1.5 atmospheres. Our volume at the beginning of the second expansion, that was 1.33 liters. And our pressure during the third expansion, or at 0.3, is 1.25 atmospheres. So this allows us to calculate V3, 1.596 liters. So delta V for expansion B is 1.596 liters minus the starting volume of 1.33 liters and that difference is 0.266 liters. So that means the work in stage B is equal to the pressure negative, the pressure under this expansion, which is 1.25 atmospheres, times the change in volume, or 0.266 liters. And that works out to a negative 0.33 liter atmospheres. Do the conversion, and it's a negative 33. So that's work for part B. Now, work for part C. 
Well, work for expansion C, the third expansion, is going to be minus the pressure during expansion C times the change in volume during expansion C. <coughs> At the end of this whole thing, the volume is 2 liters. At stage 3, we found the volume was 1.596 liters. So the difference is 0 0.404 liters. That's delta V. So work during expansion C is negative pressure, 1.0 atmospheres, that's the pressure under expansion C, times 0 0.404 liters, and that's obviously 0 0.404 liter atmospheres. I'm not going to go through the details of the conversion. It converts to negative 40.9 joules. That number should be a negative up there. So what's the total work? Well, it's the first stage work, stage A work, which was minus 50.6 joules, plus the second stage work, which was minus 33 joules, plus the third stage work, which was minus 40.9 joules. When you sum that all up, our total work when we do this in three steps is now 124.5 joules. That's more than it was when we had two steps, that was 118, and that's more than it was when we had one step and that's when it was 101. So what seems to be happening here is the more steps we do this in, the more work we get out. Why would that be? Well, here's one way to explain that. This was problem number one, where we did this in one step. Work is, in the, sh is the shaded area here. There's no work done when this isochoric sudden drop in pressure happens. The only work that's done is done during the expansion. And this shaded rectangle tells us how much work was done. From the start point to the end point, we have this space here that I'm shading in in green where there was change without work output. Now I've put problem number two on the screen for comparison. Look what's different. We dropped down to 1.5 and then we went over a short expansion. Then we dropped to one, and then we went over a longer expansion. The total amount of work is these two shaded areas. The amount of movement that didn't give us, or change that didn't give us any work, is the green shaded area. It's a smaller green shaded area than we had in step one. You're losing less of the energy as heat, and you're getting more of the energy as work when you do it in two steps. Now I put problem number three graph up here for comparison. Now we did this in three steps. The total work is now the three shaded regions. And if you compare the green shaded wasted areas, the wasted energy areas, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. So the more steps you do this in, the more of your change gives you work and the less is wasted as heat. That's the green shaded regions. Let's take this to its logical conclusion. Adding more steps gives you more work. How many steps would you have to have to get the maximum possible amount of work out for this change that starts at that point and ends at that point on that ice? Well, if you're thinking about it, you probably came to the conclusion that it's if you had infinitely many steps, then the green shaded area goes down to nothing. Well, if you had infinitely many steps, that means that you actually aren't dropping and going over, dropping and going over. You're just making those little stair steps so small that you're following the isotherm. What does that tell you? Isothermal expansions give the most work. The most work you can get out of a change is during an isothermal expansion. But think about isothermal expansion. Isothermal expansion doesn't just use internal energy. It doesn't use any internal energy. It uses Q that comes from the outside to keep keep it at constant temperature. So the Q matches the W. Any work that's done does not come from the system, it comes from the outside. So here's what that means. Isothermal expansions are great ways to change Q into W.